Hey guys, it's the Black Critter Guy. I'm here at NitroCon and I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing Gendo Ikari himself. John Swayze. Thank you, John, for joining me. Hey today. man, thanks a lot for having now, me Now, I gotta ask you, being that your last name is Swayze, do people mistake you as maybe a relative or a brother of Patrick Swayze? Um, you know, it's funny you mention that. No. No? Not, not no, even No, of course. Close? Yeah, no, they do all the time. Uh, we're both from Houston. Our mothers are both named Patsy, and yet there's absolutely no relation that I can find whatsoever. It's, Isn't uh, that was, just the biggest coincidence? It really is. We spell our names differently. Uh, of course, mine is the correct way. Uh, I was but, about to uh, say, like, he, he's, he's like, I want to stand out because I can't hide under John's yeah, shadow. Yeah, my, my goal, actually, uh, as an actor way back when, when I started 25 years ago, was to uh, one day um, have Patrick be on The Tonight Show and have Jay Leno go, so uh, are you any relation to John? You know, but... And course, he'd, he'd just give that look like... Yeah, John who? John I don't know who. who's that. But that's uh, clearly not going to happen. So. It's a shame. Yeah. Now, you've been voice acting for how many years now? I have been uh, a professional actor for just over 25 years and have been voice acting probably for about 20 years. Now, what, what got you into acting both in live action and also in voice acting? Well, I was uh, starving as a lawyer, so I thought I'd find something a little more solid uh, with a foundation, so I decided acting was that solution. Oh. So um, right? Yeah, exactly. No. I, uh, I, I knew I wanted to be an actor ever since I was 15 years old. I was in New York and uh, saw a Broadway play with my parents. And Which one was it? It was called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And mm -hmm. um, it was their final performance. And uh, I was just bitten by the bug, as they say. And um, started doing theater, started doing film, commercials. And then one day started doing voiceover. And then one day started doing anime and really doing voice acting. Mm -hmm. You know, not just a commercial or an industrial narration, but real uh, animation and, and really character stuff like that. And I just fell in love with it and, they, and have been doing it ever since. So. They found you and they're like, we need your voice. Well, I was, I was very fortunate. In Houston at the time, in 1995, um, there was a company called ADV Films, mm -hmm. uh, which just happened to hit the bonanza and turned out to be for... A good 15 years the number one producer of anime in North America and at the time I didn't even know what anime was you know so I was learning and, and growing with them and I got a reputation uh, as being able to do a lot of character voices so I would as my wife puts it I'm sort of the Kevin Bacon of anime I'm in a almost gazillion in everything. things that are out there you know maybe we'll play the game of six degrees of separation maybe of, so maybe so Sweden. yeah maybe so maybe so so uh, Oh, oh go ahead. Go, no, no, no. You, you oh, no, I was just going to say. So I've gotten to work with some great people, Vic Mignogna and Chris and Greg Ayers and uh, Chris Patton and Lucy Christian and Monica Rial and um, just a host of, of wonderful talent, uh, some great directors like Kyle Jones, uh, another actor, Jay Hickman. Uh, as a matter of fact, Jay and Kyle and I are working on a project right now mm -hmm. called The Perfect Con. And so keep your eyes and ears open. This is an coming anime. to a theater near you. I hope so, or at least your download. You know, hey, I'll but check. Uh, it's an animated movie that we've got the rights to that we've rewritten. It's a CG movie, oh. and it's already done. So we took it and we've rewritten the script and made it our own movie, and it's pretty funny. Can't it, wait for you to see it. It's interesting that you brought up ADD, ADV Films because they're also the, in the, they're the same company, kind of like Funimation. Right. I noticed when I was looking through all of your uh, your anime work that you did a lot of work with Funimation. What I got you onto Funimation's radar? Uh, well, uh, that's a, a great question. Um, ADV Films was, uh, like I said, the number one producer in anime in Houston and uh, or in North America, based out of Houston. And uh, this company up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area started called Funimation. They got a hold of a show called Dragon Ball, which uh, turned out to be a nice little gig for them. Yeah, it blew up. And uh, but they were kind of new to the whole anime thing, and 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 uh, while they were trying to build up their actors, and they, a lot of great actors have come out of that yes. uh, that market. You know, um, Chris Sabat and uh, Colleen Clinkenbeard and. and Mike McFarland, just to name a few, but anyway, um, they were looking for actors, and they knew there were actors in Houston that knew how to do this process because it's a process, ADR process, and so they would bring, start bringing up actors from Houston. Well, then the work in Houston started to slow down, so actors were really trying to find more work in in the Dallas area, and I was able to get an introduction to Mike McFarland, and he was doing Full Metal Alchemist, and I got on as a, a small character. 
at first and then started to get introduced to different directors there and mm -hmm. slowly but surely built a reputation with them as being very versatile and you know knock on wood I was very fortunate and blessed and and had some great opportunities put before me and tried to make the best of them and and, and did so so that's how it kind of all came together now you voice like a numerous a numerous characters but one of the more recognizable roles you've done is Gendo Ikari from the Neon Genesis Evangelion series yes. and the rebuild of Evangelion, which Mike McFarlane directed you in. Yes, yes. I actually listened to the commentary. It was pretty interesting. Oh, well, good, good. I, I thought I was sleeping through it. <laughs> I, I, so we, what what brought you to the project of Evangelion? Did they reach out to you or did you try out what was... Well, um, <laughs> there's been a number of roles, and this being one of them, um, where I had actually done Ava... Um, when it was ADV's property hmm. early on. I had done some bit roles, little characters, and an actor by the name of Tristan McCavery had actually originally created the role or voiced the English version mm -hmm. of, uh, of Gendo. Yeah. And through some legally, I don't know what the situation is, but anyway. They bought the rights, maybe? They, well, no, but even when ADV had it, they wanted to recast Gendo. So they had me come in and sort of voice match what he had done, not mimic him but kind of capture his essence mm -hmm. but still make it my own and then we, we we went in and we redid a lot of the stuff he did we did the movie we did you know a whole bunch of it so I sort of took that role over and then once it went to Funimation and Mike got a hold of it Mike wanted to stay as true to the original cast as possible but he didn't want to go back to Tristan he wanted to use me since mm -hmm. I had done ended up doing more of it and uh, so it was a real good opportunity. And, and it, but I say it's one of many. I, the same thing happened with Full Metal Alchemist. I played, uh, after I did it originally, the first character, um, I ended up getting the role of Hohenheim, which originally was Scott McNeil. And Scott McNeil wasn't able to do Brotherhood, so they had me come in and audition and sort of not mimic him, but voice match him. And, you know, there's been a, a few roles like that that I've ended up getting because another actor wasn't available or, or, or whatever. So. Um, you know, where's the where did the voice of Gendo come from? It's very gruff, very stern. There's not really a lot of sympathy in his voice. Like what? No, did, what no. brought on? Like what inspired you to do that type of voice? Well, I mean, again, uh, he, Gendo is a, is a very he's a control a man that's always in control. Exactly. You know, very seldom will he ever lose control. Mm -hmm. Even if he's losing control, he doesn't want to show that he's losing control. So he doesn't, you know, just blow up and, and all this. Exactly. Everything is, is and, it, and his, you know, his, his, his pose like this, it's all, it's a very calculated, everything's very calculated. And, you, you only know, like see him smile like twice in the yeah. entire thing. Um, uh, that's one aspect of it. But another aspect, aspect of it is, is, you know, the Japanese actually created this character. Okay. So... As an actor, I think it behooves me, and it's important that I honor what the original Japanese actor did. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna oh, forget what that guy did. I'm gonna do it my own way. I need to recreate it, kind of in that actor's vein as well, because they're the ones that actually created the actor or the the character. I'm just merely providing an English uh, uh, English uh, representation, right? So I can't. I mean, while I want to bring something to the table, you know, not just try to mimic it mm -hmm. I can't um, you know I have to be true to what that original actor and what his intention intentions were and you know that kind of thing what the you know what I mean it's mm -hmm. like I, I gotta honor that I can't just go off well, I, I I'm gonna make this my own you know I, can't, I definitely I don't, I, can definitely I, don't do, I don't like that. to do that yeah I mean it's it's they created it not me so. now I know you voiced them so you you probably have seen all the series and the movies right I just want to know your thought on one of them end of Evangelion were you as confused or even shocked as many of the fans were by that ending? I'm, I'm still confused. I don't, you know, I don't. There's a line actually in the movie where you have to say something to um, one of the characters that's the doctor character, and you're supposed to be like, the truth is, and then you're whispering something. What do you think Gendo said when he was whispering those words to her? What kind of underwear are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, never. Yeah, sure <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I mean, that's some of that stuff. You know, when we come in and we do these roles, um, a lot of times we'll, we, you know, we come in and we voice it and we're out onto another project and we exactly. don't even have time to think about it. True, and true. so, you know, I, 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 I must admit I'm one of those characters. I know, you know, uh, Evangelion has a, 
I mean, I've heard that there, there are classes in colleges that study Evangelion. Oh, yes. You know, I mean, there's, it's like... There's a class here at UCF. Oh. Study, they study why Evangelion is considered the greatest. Right, okay. So, you know, I, I'm just like, wow, that's pretty heavy. You know, to me, it's... It, it, ha it, it has a, such it a profound a role. Read. It does, it does. And it's, uh, you know, I mean, um, you know, look, look what it inspired. I mean, it's... it's you've seen the movie Pacific Rim, that's Evangelion, you know. Pretty, pretty see, I told you guys. Yeah, it, it, you know, it is, you know. it's uh, Exactly. Um, so, do people recognize you as the voice of Gendo? Like, when you go to conventions and stuff, it's like, hey, that's Gendo. And oh, what, absolutely. What are the reactions? Do people like, oh, I hate you. you you're so mean to yeah. Shinji. Or they're like, oh, you know, you do a really good job. I like you, man. Yeah, you know, I. it's a... No one says I hate you, except at home. I get that a lot, uh, my kids generally. But uh, you're not home. <laughs> you know, no. When I go to a convention, it's just such a blessing because people are there and they're so supportive and they love what you do. And you know, it's it's nice to know that you've have an impact. You've had an impact. I wanted to say you've touched someone, but that's really not appropriate. Um, uh, <laughs> this is a hands-free <laughs> convention. It's a hands-free interview. Um, but if you if you if you do reach out and you can reach and, and it, it affects them in a way you know that makes them happy or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it's it's a treat you know it's it's fun and it's um, as an actor it's very it's part of the reward you know we do it because we love to do it we do it to get paid but frankly we also do it because if yeah, the, other people come up and tell us how much they love us for it it makes us feel pretty doggone good. Well, I will say this: out of all the Gendo Akari presents, even the Japanese one, I actually like your version the best. Well, I can't really argue with that. It's, it's good, guys. I mean, Funimation. Last question: um, to all aspiring. Boxers. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I <laughs> thought you were gonna go boxers or briefs or Marianne. I you was because a lot of my subscribers they're aspiring voice actors. They want to get into the field of voice acting. Yes. What advice would you give to these aspiring voice actors? It's very simple. Take an acting class. Okay. Any type of acting class? I would, yeah, I mean, probably a film acting class. Um, but you want to learn how to take a script, read it, muddle your way through it, understand the ups and downs. You know, a, a script is like a piece of music. I mean, it has textures, it has a rhythm, it has flowability, you know, whatever, exactly. and you want to find what that is. You want to be able to look at it and sort of see what words stand out and what what may have a, a normal punch. Um, and if you can, once you can do that, then you can sort of analyze the script and you get a good handle on it. Mm -hmm. Then uh, that's going to help you in voice acting. Because voice acting is just acting. I mean, it's whether you're in front of a camera, you're in front of a microphone, you're on a stage in front of an audience, it really doesn't matter. If you can take a script and make the words sound like they're coming from here, then you are in great shape, and that's the that's really the essence of um, of acting in general, and, and certainly the essence of voice acting. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to actually sit down and do this interview with me. I, I want to thank John Swayze for sitting doing this interview with me. I want to thank Matthew Goodison or wherever he is for letting me do this interview, and I want to thank Anime Spot for bringing this awesome voice actor to this convention. And wow. If you could do me one tiny favor, can you look to the camera and say, in Gendo's voice, you're watching the Black Critic Guy. Peace, YouTube. You're watching the Black Critic Guy. Peace, YouTube. Peace, YouTube. Peace, YouTube. Peace, YouTube. Peace, YouTube. <laughs>